This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 449, 10 Types of Friends Worth Fighting For, part one, by Mark Sharonoff of markandangel.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your very own personal narrator, reading to you from some amazing blogs, kind of like an audiobook, except free and ongoing, and from many different amazing authors. It's Saturday, so I'm gonna keep this nice and short for you so you can go enjoy your weekend. Let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. 10 Types of Friends Worth Fighting For, Part 1, by Mark Sharonoff of markandangel.com. Quote, I would rather walk with a friend in the dark than alone in the light. Helen Keller. This post was inspired by three emails I received this morning, all of which share a similar theme about friendship. Below, I've shared a small excerpt from each with permission. I know you'll appreciate them. Quote, Kayla, my 12-year-old daughter, speaks fluent sign language because her best friend, Megan, who she grew up with from the time she was an infant, is deaf. Seeing their genuine friendship evolve and grow over the years truly warms my heart. Quote, my younger brother, Greg, spends most of his free time at school hanging out with the football team. He's actually been working out with the team and everything. Greg has a mild case of autism. About a year ago, my mom was ready to pull him out of school and have him homeschooled due to excessive bullying from his peers. One of the popular football players who had stood up for him in the past heard about this, explained the situation to his teammates and friends, and stood by his side until the bullying stopped. Now a year later, he's just one of the guys. Quote, Yesterday, my sister and I were in a pretty bad car accident. Luckily, both of us were wearing our seatbelts and didn't have any major injuries. My sister is and always has been Mrs. Popular. She knows everyone. I'm the complete opposite, an introvert who hangs out with the same two girls all the time. My sister immediately posted a comment on Facebook and Instagram about our accident. And while all her friends were commenting, my two friends showed up independently at the scene of the accident before the ambulance arrived, unquote. Each of these emails made me smile because they reminded me of the power of true friendship. There's honestly nothing more beautiful and meaningful in this world. The author of the third email excerpt above ended her email with this line, quote, I know I don't have a lot of friends, but I'm sure grateful I have a couple worth fighting for, unquote. And that's exactly what I want to reflect on in this post. 10 types of friends worth fighting for. Number one, friends who make time for each other. There are countless intricacies to every great friendship, but the foundation is always incredibly simple, making time for each other. The key is to hang in, stay connected, fight for them, and let them fight for you. Don't walk away when the going gets a little tough. Don't be distracted too easily. Don't be too busy or tired. And don't take them for granted. Friends are part of the glue that holds life and happiness together. It's powerful stuff. So put down the smartphone, close the laptop, and enjoy each other's company face-to-face the old-fashioned way. There are a few joys that equal a good conversation, a genuine laugh, a long walk, a friendly dance, or a big hug shared by two people who care about each other. Sometimes the most ordinary things can be made extraordinary simply by doing them with the right people. You know this. Choose to be around these people and choose to make the most of your time together. Number two, friends who are willing to put in the necessary effort. Healthy, long-term friendships are amazing, but rarely easygoing 24-7. Why? Because they require flexibility and compromise. Two different people will always have two slightly different perspectives about the same situation. Resisting this truth and seeing the hard times as immediate evidence that something is catastrophically wrong or that you're supposed to see eye to eye on everything only aggravates the difficulties. By contrast, finding the willingness to view the challenges as learning opportunities will give you the energy and strength you need to continue to move forward and grow your friendship for decades to come. Number three, friends who believe in each other. Sometimes we see our worst selves, our most vulnerable and weak selves. We need someone else to get close enough to tell us we're wrong, someone we trust. That's what true friends are for. Simply believing in another person and showing it in words and deeds on a consistent basis can make a huge difference in their life. Several studies of people who grew up in dysfunctional homes but who grew up to be happy and successful show that the one thing they had in common was someone who believed in them. Be this someone for those you care about. Support their dreams. Participate with them. Cheer for them. Be nothing but encouraging. Whether they actually follow through with their present dreams or completely change their minds is irrelevant. Your belief in them is of infinite importance either way. Read The Mastery of Love. Number four, friends who face challenges and weaknesses together. 
When we honestly ask ourselves which friends have helped us the most, we often find that it's those special few who, instead of giving lots of advice, specific solutions, or quick cures, have chosen rather to share in our challenges and touch our wounds with a listening ear and a loving heart. The friend who can be silent with us in a moment of confusion, who can stay with us in an hour of pain and mourning, who can tolerate not knowing or having all the answers, not curing and fixing everything in an instant, and instead simply face the reality of our momentary powerlessness with us, that is a friend worth fighting for. Number five, hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled 10 Types of Friends Worth Fighting For by Mark Sharonoff of markandangel.com. And this post is a bit long, so I'll wrap it up tomorrow. If you want to help keep this show alive and well, come by oldpodcast.com, that's O-L-D podcast.com, slash support. I have a list of ways you can help us out to keep these going, most of which are free. And thank you so much for listening and being here. It means a lot. I hope you're having a great weekend. I'm going to be back tomorrow to continue this post. I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.